גוד מורגן זוסמן. נמאסטי, בוקר טוב. היי, טודי, אני עם מי פרנד בוריס, והוא גם איתי איתי סקיורטי אקספרט. We would uh, talk about various aspects of making career in Germany, especially for IT security professionals. And of course, Boris will also engage us with his experience in IT security. Over to Boris with a small introduction. Nice to meet you guys and happy regards and happy welcome to Germany. My name is Boris. I'm working for the last 10 years in cyber security, mainly in project and program management. I was uh, working with Sid in auditing and now I'm building up a security operation center for a massive big German company. That's great. So Boris has in, in total almost 10 years of work experience, yeah. right? And he is also engaged in various verticals in cybersecurity like auditing and, and right now he's engaged with SOC buildup. So most likely uh, Boris is also engaged with the technical profiles of a SOC, yeah. right? Anyways, so in this video, we are going to talk about various questions, the various FAQs regarding making career in Germany, especially in cybersecurity area. So Boris, the first question I would like to ask you is if a fresher wants to get into cybersecurity, and wants to make a career in Germany, what should be your advice for them? First, don't be afraid of cyber security. And second, don't be afraid about Germany. I always say cyber security is an understanding of IT history and the lack of doing appropriate measurement and appropriate stuff. If you're interested in that, you are the perfect guy to get into cyber security. If you're interested in a structured environment and a structured country, you're the perfect fit for Germany. That's great. So Boris, when sh tell me the, uh, the first step a person should take over uh, to initiate uh, to make career in Germany or in career in cybersecurity. So first let's talk about career in Germany. Germany is quite structured. So the aim or the approach of a German company is getting stuff done from A to Z and define and deliver based on the production and tool chain. If you can do that, if you have a thought like that, where do I start, what do I do, how do I finish? You are perfect for a career in Germany. So don't worry about that. It's not hard to learn. If we are talking about cybersecurity, what are your interests in, in IT? What do you like? What do you think about? Do you like to code? Do you like architecture? Do you like software? What's your main focus? Check on it, understand it, and try to get deep into it. Try to see boundaries and connections. And always focus on the business side because business drives our industry in IT. That's correct. Business is the driving factor for any um, as well, IT or cybersecurity. And uh, Boris has rightly said that you should first uh, do a kind of a deep study which field interests you the most. Exactly. Right? Because the most important thing, if you start anything you didn't do before, it must be fun. It must be a joy to you. So yes. find something which makes you joy. Because once you have that, you will get deeper, 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 and you won't even mention that you do. That's right. Absolutely correct. Okay, uh, so what is the other question that many people ask very often is if a candidate wants to make a career in cyber security, should he or she learn an official program in cyber security or any other graduation or post graduation in any other field will also suffice? Well, it's definitely of a preference, but it's not a KO criteria. As I told you, the main focus is the business perspective and the business side. So the most important thing for any IT security personnel is to understand the business process A to Z. So if you are working in finance, if you are working in production, if you are working in banking mm -hmm. and you understand what you do, jumping into cybersecurity feels as easy as coming directly from a cybersecurity perspective. And just to emphasize this thought, imagine you learn cybersecurity. You learn a lot about computers, about hardware, about software, about development, about protection, about history. And you never saw a bank from the inside. You never saw a production line from the inside. So it's definitely not a waste if you come from an entire different source and come into cybersecurity. And, and just to emphasize this point, we are just starting with cybersecurity. Yeah. It will grow within the next 10 years exponentially. That's correct. So the bottom line is you really don't need to have an official educational background exclusive in cybersecurity to make career in cybersecurity. Instead, a, a basic understanding of how business works is that what you really require. Yeah. No? And it's empathy because at the very end, you're working with people and That's people correct. do whatever people do. If you understand that, you can align that to the demands of your business. Then you are fit for cybersecurity. Perfect. 
So uh, question number, well, I've forgotten what. For five stuff again. Yeah, something like that. So the next question is: Do starter profiles or beginner profiles in cyber security need coding skills also? Well, I can code, but not to a good distinct and not good quality. And I'm working in this area for ten years. It can definitely harm to have it. I mean, you have a system, you want to attack it. Having the skills, basic skills to get in, to extract files, to extract data, to understand how you access a website, where it's coming from, how to manipulate it, definitely cannot harm to check, to test. Because if we are talking about cybersecurity, we are talking about the scoping and the layering. So once you are trying to attack something and you see something, you need to plausify if you want to go further or deeper. Making a first attack or simulating a first attack will make you understand if you need to go further or deeper. So it's definitely of no harm. But as I told you before, it's not a limit. It's not a showstopper. If you cannot code, it's no worry. It's no biggie. I emphasize you, however, to learn to code because it will bring upsides to every business and every perspective you're doing. That's Even if you are working just at Excel, I still encourage you to learn to code because it will advance your workday. That's correct. And even um, there are many tools which are already available, but you sometimes want to customize those tools as per your requirements. For that, you require coding. Yeah. No? Sid, from your perspective, since you are more into tech than I am, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, um, well, my profile is something different because I have almost 19, 20 years of work experience. So now it's more like administrative or managerial posts, wherein not much of coding is required. But anyways, if I want to streamline my work progress or if I want to make some program which eases my life, then certainly I would love to code. But I'm still not an expert, I will uh, really say. Okay. Great. Great. So, Boris, the next question is, are there any free resources that you can recommend for beginners or those who want to uh, get a taste of cybersecurity? Plenty. So, the advantage of the internet brings us free education on any level and on any demand. We are talking about stuff like Open University, Udemy, Coursera, and whatever you're having. You have entire platforms, you're getting in hacking environment, you're getting guidelines how to hack, what to hack, why to hack, and so on. So there are a lot of tools available and a lot of tools out there to do it and to make it. Again, Everything is based on your perspective, uh, on your entry into the cybersecurity market. If you are going on a technical level, definitely download a hacking environment. You will learn how to do it, what's behind it, and it will bring you joy. If you are talking about a management level, well, let's take a risk assessment. Check mm -hmm. your company risk. Try to estimate how your risks are done, how your risks conclude, and what's the follow-up and the steps behind it. If you are doing auditing, for example, Check an environment and see flaws. Everything of that is survivable. And once you are getting into that, and once you gamify everything, you will get into it very, very fast. So again, don't worry about cybersecurity. You don't need to be an expert to get into the field. In fact, nobody can be expert in this. It's kind of a universe in itself, isn't it? Yeah. No? And this is also what changed over the last 10 years. There was business, there was IT, and there was cybersecurity. It's a very, 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 very small side effect. Now, cybersecurity is aligned and integrated between business and IT. So the field is very, very wide. Therefore, your skills are very much demanded in our area. That's correct. In fact, I, uh, I recently heard a very nice sentence that previously IT security was kind of bolted upon the business, but now it is baked into the business. Yep. Now, so it's like... Right from the initial uh, infancy stages of a business, IT security comes into picture till the end product comes in market. Exactly. No? And the reason behind it, I will tell you in a sentence, is cybersecurity was always regarded as some kind of an insurance. You need to do it in case. Yeah. Therefore, it was always of a disadvantage. It was like there is something to drain money from. So it was never a positive thing. That's but right. you can transfer it positively. And this is what we are doing right now. And this is what makes this market so interesting. That's correct. And sometimes I'm, I'm thankful to hackers as well because of them we are uh, on job. Yeah. <laughs> Just a joke. Now, the next question for Boris is any cybersecurity certifications that you can recommend which are high in demand in Germany especially? Yeah. If you are talking about the technical perspective, it's from the ISACA. It's the CC, the Certification in Cybersecurity. 
and especially the CSSP, which is a technical cybersecurity expert. If we're talking about management, it's the CISM, uh -huh. which is a management perspective. If you're, for example, going for auditing, it's the CISA. Correct. And uh, if you are talking about penetrating, attacking, it's the CAH, the Certified Ethical Hacker. These are the four main approaches, I would say, which come in handy for entering into cybersecurity. Again, if you are talking about network, if you're talking about architecture, if you're talking about software development and so on, there are different areas and there are different certificates which are not necessarily cybersecurity specific certificates, but will still come very in handy. The next question for Boris is, uh, can you give us some hints or resources to, f to help people find job in Germany in cybersecurity? It's not that complicated. Go to any Indeed, go to any LinkedIn and simply check for cybersecurity and simply put in cyber, put in IT security, put in OT security, put in awareness because awareness is also part of uh, cybersecurity. You can also put deviations, for example, asset management. Asset management in IT perspective is also cybersecurity. And if you taking the usual words, you put it in any LinkedIn, you put it in any Indeed, you will find plenty of jobs, plenty of openings. And I'm quite sure they are very much interested for Indians to come to Germany and work. I fully agree with Boris. Uh, somehow I have also um, uh, in last four or five years observed that there is kind of an inclination for, especially for Indians. Um, I don't know why, because they are known for yoga. They are known for good uh, Kochen, that is SN and uh, technical skills. Well, Ma yeah, I have a theory to that as well, Sid. My thought is that the most important skill you need in cybersecurity is empathy. Uh, you need to get and dig into the system and understand why it's working and how it's working. Yeah. And ah, Look, yeah. I have a mosquito. <laughs> you see, we have the same stuff as you guys in India. But it was telling, uh, if you have empathy, if you are willing to understand the system, you are perfect in cybersecurity. And this is why Indian culture is very much regarded in this area. Okay, so the last technical question for regarding cybersecurity for Boris is, are cybersecurity jobs stressful? It can be, but it does need to be. If we're talking about cybersecurity, at the end, a lot of people hold you responsible or accountable for flaws or attacks which will happen. Which means, in case of an emergency, you need to mitigate, you need to deal, you need to resolve. This will especially come in hand when an attack occurs. So. Once you have a disadvantage to a company because of cybersecurity, your position will be quite more stressful. A lot of companies also demand you to be available all the time. So these are things which can be stressful, can be regarded as stressful. On the other side, if you can negotiate a reasonable agreement with your employee and define a scope which is of a positive outcome, then you're good to go. You have your 40 hours week. And after eight hours a day, you're going home no matter what. That's great. So it depends on uh, time to time, whether your job is stressful or not. And of course, on your profile as well. Yeah. yeah? So there are multiple uh, aspects regarding this, but uh, be uh, be comfortable. It is not that stressful as it is shown in, in films, at least in movies. It is shown like uh, a hacker is working day and night and is not uh, even eating or drinking. It's not like that. It's still a comfortable job. We people are working and we are very comfortable. And of course, it's depending on the seniority, on the management level you That's are working correct. on. If you're on entry level, you're going home after eight hours. If you are working in management, any manager doesn't go at home after, uh, before 10. Correct. Great. So that was all about uh, cybersecurity jobs in Germany. Now, I would like to ask Boris some normal uh, information about working in Germany. Yeah. So how does a typical work culture looks like and how is your typical day schedule looks like? when you're working. Okay. So, typical work culture in Germany. If you're talking about work culture, Germans are quite strict and quite structured in the work day. You have your meetings, which you have on a regular base. You have your shifts and your tasks, which you have on a regular days. And you want to align everything you do with your workers, which is often employees. Your work usually starts at 7, 8. In IT, it starts at 9. You have your lunch from 12 to 1, and you're working your eight hours. You write it down, that's it. Once every, I don't know, six months, you are coming together with all your company and you are going to some celebrations. Once a week, you're getting out with your colleagues, getting some drinks, getting some food. 
I started nine. I prepare the day for my first meetings. I do some presentations. I do some uh, checking on my project management uh, portfolio and my project management program. Then I have my usual meetings. It's uh, either regular status and schedules or it's some emergency meetings. Then I have some uh, tasks in between and usually at 5, 5.30 my day ends. In between I have my lunch break, which is usually 12 to 1 or 12 to 12.30. So it's nothing too complicated, nothing too crucial what I do. Every day is different since I'm working in project management, which brings me obviously a lot of joy and fun. That's correct. So friends, uh, uh, rightly said, Boris, that the, the work-life balance is clearly demarcated, clearly structured here. After you're working as you are you you can be rest assured as unless and until there's a fire in the forest nobody is going to ever call you or you know ask you for any assignment which you had completed or not yeah a very famous saying in germany is work hard party harder yeah so that means once you are done with your work you are supposed to party you are supposed to enjoy your life no? that is a kind of a mandatory uh, thing in germany it yeah? is but it's also dependent on the area and the field you're working in. If, for example, you're working in investment banking, if you're working in m and in if you're working in high-achieving jobs, also in big tech startups, which are regarded to be a unicorn, they really work hard. So it's easily 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And when you do that, you need the compensation, which is partying. Mm -hmm. But this is the exclusion, not the main case. The main case is you have a a very very relaxed life you have your 40 hours job a week you have a very very relaxed life how to structure your free time there is no stress you have usually 30 days of vacation uh you have a very very good well-being package so it's not just a salary it's addendums and benefits that the company is also giving to you so all in all, it's very, very joyful to work in Germany for German companies. That's correct. Even uh, I myself, I'm working since last five years in Germany and I can, uh, I mean, give my stamp to this statement that he said. It's, it's life is so easy here. I mean, with the work culture that you are really supposed to work only eight hours a day, not more than that. And in case if you are to work, you have to literally uh, get a clearance from your boss or from your management that you have to work uh, uh, out of your working hours or you may be uh, clearly compensated for any extra work uh, hours that you bring yeah. in. Uh? But anyways, uh, work culture is something that I'm proud of here in Germany. Yeah, great. So that was a great interactive session with Boris. I still ask Boris if you have anything extra to share regarding work culture or your life in Germany. It's definitely one thing. The thing I want to tell you guys is don't be afraid, don't worry, and don't be scared. It seems a little different. It is a little colder, it is a little more conservative, but once you're in, once you feel and understand the excitement and the advantage about it, you feel at home in no time. Half a year and you're home. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So that was all for this video. Boris, thank you so much. Thank you, Seth. And if you have got any doubts, comments or any questions, please feel free to post them on YouTube comments. I or Boris will be more than happy to answer them out. Thank you guys and namaste. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Prima. <laughs>